I'm going to do a couple of disc calipers on this um, 88 gold wing. I got a kit here from BrakeCrafters.com and it, uh, it has both my front wheel calipers in there. They're two cylinder calipers. And so since I do have the luxury of a center stand um, all I need is a small floor jack to pick up the uh, front end of the motor. Pick it under the motor anywhere because most of the weight is balanced on the center stand so it doesn't take a whole lot of weight on the front of the motor to lift it just a little bit 50 pounds 100 pounds I don't know it ain't a whole lot jack it up and as long as I'm on metal I'm on the metal frame there under the motor jack it up until it's sitting on the back wheel Now, I'm not crawling underneath the vehicle, so I'm not putting jack stands under it, but for you safety sallies, if you, if you want to try to find a place to put one, you can. Or put two of these uh, little jacks under there. Um, it's kind of pointless. But I am going to start taking stuff off of here. I um, had to do a little bit of work on the caliper recently to, to try to free it up some it was sticking it was locked up real tight got it freed up some it's it's workable now but it's uh, 30 some years old 30 what six years old I think I don't remember so um, that won't last I'm going to go on ahead and put kits in them and change the front tire somewhere on this front tire let me find it I got a spot that uh, I was concerned about it was on this side so I bought a new tire it's right in here underneath this arrow let me zoom in see if we can get a close-up on that there's a crack in the tire there and so I thought well I don't know how old the tire is it's not worn out but I hardly ever drive it and with that crack in there there's some dry rock going on I'm gonna I got a new tire there we'll change that too while we're at it so we start pulling stuff off of here this piece right here and it's gonna be identical we're only gonna do one side on camera uh, because both sides are identical the only difference is on this side you got a speedometer cable to take off but self-explanatory so this piece here just pops off. Got a screw under there, and then a uh, couple of screws down here. So go ahead and get those off. Take this cover off. I have those three eight millimeter bolts out. Sometimes these uh, little washers here, spacer things, will fall out with the bolt. Um, you might want to just grab those, pull them off so you don't lose them. Have a pan to keep them in. You only got two of those. They're down here because this one has this metal bracket for the brake line that kind of serves as that uh, same purpose up here on top. Get this out of the way. And I need some Allen wrenches take this one off and this one got a six millimeter Allen wrench up here five millimeter here that's on my bike I don't know if it's different on someone else's different year I'm sure all the 88 uh, gold wings are going to be the same okay with those bolts out you can take your caliper off at this point and get your um, brake shoes off of there if you're just changing brake pads but uh, since I'm going to do a caliper I gotta take this banjo fitting off so what I'm going to do first is put my bolts back in these holes I'm not going to tighten them down I'm just going to stick them in there so that I can break this banjo nut loose
that's on this brake line and then I'm going to put a brake fluid ca uh, clamp on the end of that. Alright I broke the nut loose the banjo bolt loose and I don't want the brake fluid dripping out so I'm going to turn the wheel back this way so that it drips down here instead of on the tire. I'm going to go ahead and take this back off of there and then uh, I'm going to put one of these clamps. These are cheap brake line clamps. You can hook them on the back of a brake line fitting on a car and put this on the end that's open. There's different ones, different shapes and sizes for transmission lines or whatever. This one has the plug on both sides. Those two black plugs, one on each side, that's the one I'm going to use here because the banjo fitting's got an opening on both sides. And whatever you do, do not let the brake fluid get on your paint. Especially in my case because this is a new paint job. Well, it's four years old, but the, the bike's always in the garage. It's never exposed outside. So I'm going to put that clamp on there. Okay, that's how that clamp goes on there. But these clamps that I got, they just, they're spring-loaded. You just squeeze this down. And install it like that. Well, now I'm ready to take these bolts back out and uh, take the caliper off. I'm going to use both hands for that because the caliper will just drop right off. I just let the weight of the wheel fall down. Since this is the caliper that's fairly tight, the other side's loose and it's pretty free. Just do this, let all the fluid run out of there. I'm going to use two hands to get that off. Okay, I got this caliper off. I still have the bracket on there, which I'm not really too concerned about at this point. I hope I don't need to take it off. But um, the kit does come with a bushing that goes inside there for the bracket. and uh, So I might go ahead and take that off to put that in. And uh, the bushing's here. On this end of it, of the bracket, this, there's one a bushing here and another one over here, over there. But to get these brake shoes off, I got to get these two screws out, and they could be tricky because when I had this off the other day and I was trying to free it up before I ordered the kit, I had to press this in with a a C clamp really hard, and then pump it back out with the uh, with the hand you know the hand grip on the on the brake, on the handbrake, and then push it back in, and then pump it back out, push it back in with WD-40 sprayed on those two pistons in there, and then finally it started to move more freely, but it's still way too tight, and there was a corrosion around the ends of these screws, but with the spray I put on it, and then just kind of picking at it with a, like a needle, like a seal pick with a sharp pointed needle, scraping the corrosion off so that I can get the spray to soak in a little deeper. I don't know if we're going to be able to get these off without a problem or not. Those pins are steel. This uh, body of this casting is aluminum. So I might be able to carefully heat the thing up and the aluminum expands at a higher rate than steel so that should loosen them up. But I got to be careful. I can't heat it up too much because this um, this powder coating will come off. It'll melt around, I don't know, three, four hundred degrees. That powder coating melts. So we can't let it get too hot. But it's got to get hot enough to... I might have to heat it up. We'll see. Um, with the corrosion scared me when I saw that. But maybe, maybe I can unscrew these things. Let's put it in the vise and see what happens. I got the one screw loose. I put this in the vise up with the screw pattern going up and down because there wasn't room to have both of them going sideways. I wouldn't be able to get to the screws. This one did break loose. It was tight, but it did break loose. And so we'll get that back out of there and clean it up and 
flip this around and get the other side. I hope. I got tricks for getting screws out that are tight up to a point. I have to get it a little bit tighter than that. Too tight to just take it out with the screwdriver, so I'm going to put a little impact on it, smack it with a extension and a hammer. See if that loosens it up any. It did. It did. It's still tight, but we got it. Okay. Get those out of there and clean this thing out. <clears throat> how to get those brake shoes out and then uh, so we can get the pistons out okay I got those screw covers off that's all these are they're just covers for the uh, screws that are inside there they're that um, five millimeter Allen wrench that goes in there to get those screws out that hold the brake shoes in so what I'm going to do is drop this down in the vise um, because they're too tight to pull out just by turning them by hand. I'm not going to clamp the vise tight. I'm just going to put it in there just to hold the thing still. Okay, that one broke loose. And it's tight. It's tight. But, well, I'm also got the brake shoes that the uh, vice is against the brake shoes so that's gonna make it a little tight too uh, vice wasn't really holding against that it's just tight because it's corroded One pin. Okay, now we can get the brake shoes out. This one doesn't want to unscrew out. It's just it's too tight. I guess stick a nail or something in there from this end push it push the thing out of there okay one brake shoe already fell out this one here I still got to push that pin down it's that one that wants to stay in there but I can't do it. I only got two hands I got to hold the camera with one hand got both pins out this one's still snug but you got to push it out where it'll move with my fingers this one's loose Go ahead and pull them out, and then I'm going to put air to the um, stick an air uh, fitting on this, and see if we can push those pistons out with air. If that's not enough, then we got to put the banjo fitting back on it and pump it out with brake fluid. Before I put the air hose on it, I'm going to stick brake shoe back in there to catch the the pistons because if I don't only one of them is going to come out and it's going to come all the way out and then the other one will still be in there and I need to have something to stop the first one whichever one is looser is going to come out first and the other one's not going to move and so we need to keep it in there so we can get the other one out too so let me go ahead and try that I'm going to take this air hose 
and, and put and pump that in trying to keep it on camera is not easy I don't have another person to do my camera work most of these videos I only get a couple of dollars for them I certainly can't pay someone to uh, let me see if we can do this now one was coming out oh that one is too they're both coming out just slowly because they're tight uh, we got enough of that out to man that's all gritty and crusty that's why they're sticking so tight well you got the idea only one of them is going to come out now, but then I'll have to grab the other one with a channel lock and twist it back and forth and work it out. Okay, we'll have to grab this one with a channel lock and work it out. Okay, I got both of them out. Now I'm going to take a seal pick and I'm going to pluck this seal or piston ring, whatever you want to call it, you can pluck that out of there with a seal pick on both sides and I'm going to wash this whole thing out in parts cleaner make sure there's no corrosion in there, if there is we'll have to treat that that's the main piston rings, now the outer dust rings we're going to get them out of there too And these seal picks, even if you don't do brakes, you got to have them. They come in a set of maybe four to six different kinds, different points. You can get big ones and little ones. You got to have the little ones. Big ones you're not likely to use too often, but they don't cost a lot. It's good to have at least a couple sets of those. They have different shapes of points on them. Some of them are just straight. Some are a plain right angle. Some have like an S hook on them. They're different but they're they're excellent to have so I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of the rubber stuff off of this because I'm going to uh, clean this in um, in solvent I can't put it in carb cleaner because it's 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 um, it's powder coated and I don't want to damage the powder coating so I'm gonna go on ahead and, and pluck this steel spring out of here out of the bottom clean all of that stuff up in the parts cleaner and then uh, open this kit start putting it back together now when I first looked at this kit I, I thought this piston looks bigger than these and it is and then I saw oh well these are bigger down here because this is for both wheels or both sides both calipers so apparently the right hand one, the right side one that's on the um, on the uh, brake handle, the handbrake is bigger, and the uh, the one that works with your foot brake is on the other side. It's it's smaller, so you get more power with these bigger ones. So that's more of your braking power there. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean this up, and then we'll open that kit and start putting it back together. Let's get this bleeder valve off of there before I clean it up. That's going to be a 10 millimeter. I got this bleeder valve out and it's a little bit crusty, but it's a better design than the new ones that the kit comes with. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I'm, I think I'm going to do the same thing with this. After I get what comes off with solvent, I'll get the corrosion off with the ultrasonic. And uh, let me, I'm going to push this bracket off of here. It's a slide bracket. It, uh, it slides off of there. Let me get that off of there. And so we can clean that up as well. Put these little boots in there. That just slides off. Let's get this cleaned up and get some 
grease in there. And this rubber boot here, I just pulled that out. It was a little tight. Where did I get that from? Over here. Um, the outside didn't want to come out, but I had to squeeze this, and, and it was in here, and I squeezed it, kind of pushed on it while I was pulling on this, and then it popped out of there. The kit comes with new ones.